Hey guys, this is James Woodall. This is our next uh, episode of Surviving with Leukemia by James Woodall. Today we're going to talk about the coronavirus. That seems to be the, the topic of the nation right now. I'm wanting this video to be positive, not doom and gloom, not negative, but uh, a positive. And I'm wanting uh, to just go over some information with you to just let you know that you're not alone. We're with you and we're praying for you as I hope you're praying for us as well. Most of the people that I train, uh, sometimes they complain about not seeing their family enough or spending time with their family. And now that a lot of people are um, being asked to shelter in place or not go to work and they're around their family a lot more. They're starting to reconnect a little bit and spend time together and play board games and go for walks and learn about each other and cook together. And I, I think that's nice. I hate that the coronavirus has kind of forced America to do that, uh, kind of being thrown back a little bit to the 1950s a little bit where we're actually uh, you know, at the dinner table together and not just texting each other that dinner is ready. Uh, you're actually within talking distance of each other and saying, hey, dinner's ready or lunch is ready or that sort of thing. So, but I want to start off with reading a uh, Bible reading and my Bible readings come from Jesus Always by Sarah Young. And this is one of three uh, devotionals that I read every day and I'm just gonna uh, read it to you here and um, even if you're not Christian just listen to the words and I think you'll uh, I think you'll definitely get something out of it I am training you not only to endure your difficulties but to transform them into glory this is a supernatural feat and it requires the help of my supernatural spirit when problems are weighing heavily on you your natural tendency is to speed up your pace of living, frantically searching for answers. But what you need at such times is to slow down and seek my face. Invite the Spirit to help you as you discuss your difficulties with me. Then lay your requests before me and wait in expectation. Even though you wait expectantly and may not answer your prayers quickly, I am always doing something important in your life far beyond simply solving your problems. Your struggles are part of a much larger battle, and the way you handle them can contribute to outcomes with eternal significance. When you respond to your troubles by trusting me and praying with thanksgiving, you glorify me. Moreover, your practice of praying persistently will eventually make a vast difference in you. My loved one crowned with glory. And then the scripture reading would be Psalms chapter five, verse three, Philippians chapter four, verse six, and another Psalms chapter, Psalm chapter eight, verse five. I do my Bible readings every day. It helps me have strength and guidance for my day. I also, seek a prayer time. I am not saying everyone has to do this. What I am saying is since the coronavirus has happened and since we're all kind of forced to slow things down a bit, take time to pray or you can meditate, but take a few moments out of your day, find a quiet place if you can, and just reflect upon what's happening. I don't want you to live in fear. I want you to respect what all of the authorities and the news agencies and the CDC and everyone else, I want you to respect what they're saying and heed their warnings, but I don't want you to live in fear. I want you to be proactive with your life still. If you give in to fear and you start living in a reactive way, you start doing things out of desperation. And once you start living your life out of desperation, then you're not having a good focus as to what your end goal is. And it could be how your day is gonna turn out or what your week is gonna turn out. Rely on each other. You're, you're with your family or your neighbors. I mean, you guys are all sheltering in place or 
being asked to stay away from large public gatherings, but go, go check on a neighbor or um, FaceTime a friend. You know, we have technology now and the internet, and if you've got an iPhone or an iPad or even a laptop, they all have cameras on them now. It could be someone across the country or across the globe that you're friends with. Set up a time and just talk with them. Maybe pray with them, find out how they're doing. Um, it doesn't cost you anything and it will help you deal with what's happening in the world. Uh, that being said, uh, I want to go over what the coronavirus is. My parents live on the west coast. I live on the east coast and so there's a three hour time difference. My mom, who I love tremendously, Love sending me texts at around midnight or one o'clock my time, which is about, you know, 9 p.m. her time or 10 p.m. her time. So I'll get these texts uh, throughout the evening, late night. Uh, but this one, uh, actually, I received this morning and I wanted to read it to you because it it explains in kind of layman terms what the coronavirus is. I didn't really know this information until I received it and then I did a little bit more research which I'll get into on this video. And I will post links to everything uh, that I have researched for. Um, I will post this in the video as well. So you'll have access to the video, the transcripts, everything. My mom and dad live in Las Vegas and Las Vegas right now is on a lockdown. The casinos are closed, which in my lifetime, I never heard of the casinos closing down in Las Vegas. Um, not even during 9-11. I don't think they shut down. They were on alert, but they weren't like shut down. Um, so for them living in that town, which is a highly tourist town, and they're used to a 24 hour lifestyle. Um, this is a new way of life for them. Living on the East Coast here in Johnston County, um, I, I like the slower pace of life, and I like that it's not a 24 hour town. But uh, my parents have a cardiologist that lives in their neighborhood, and um, I guess my mom had reached out to him asking what exactly is the coronavirus. And he has a friend of his who is a immunologist, and I am not pronouncing that correctly, I'm sure, at Johns Hopkins University. And I wanna read this text to you guys. And it starts out with, feeling confused as to why coronavirus is a bigger deal than the, than the seasonal flu. Here it is in a nutshell. Feel free to share this with others who do not understand. It has to do with RNA sequencing, i.e. genetics. Seasonal flu is an all human virus. The DNA RNA chains that make up the virus are recognized by the human immune system. That means that your body has some immunity to it before it comes around each year. You get immunity two ways, through exposure to a virus or by getting a flu shot. Novel viruses come from animals. The World Health Organization tracks novel viruses in animals, sometimes for years, watching for mutations. Usually these viruses only transfer from animal to animal. Pigs, in the case of the H1N1, birds in the case of the Spanish flu, but once one of these animal viruses mutates, and starts to transfer from animals to humans, then it's a problem because we have no natural or acquired immunity, meaning humans. So once this jumps from an animal to a human, the humans have no natural or acquired immunity. The RNA sequencing of the genes inside the virus isn't human, and the human immune system doesn't recognize it so we can't fight it off. Now, sometimes the mutation only allows transfer from animal to human. For years, its only transmission is from an affected animal to a human before it finally mutates so, it, they, so that it can now transfer human to human. So once it transfers to a human, 
it can mutate again, and then you have human to human transfer. Once that happens, we have a new contagion. And depending on the fashion of this mutation, that's what decides how contagious or how deadly it's going to be. H1N1 was deadly, but it did not mutate in a way that was as deadly as the Spanish flu. Its RNA was slower to mutate and it attacked its host differently. Fast forward to today. Now here comes the coronavirus. It existed in animals only for nobody knows exactly how long. But one day at an animal market in Wuhan, China, in December 2019, it mutated and made the jump from animal to people. At first, only animals could give it to a person. But here's the scary part. In just two weeks, it mutated again and gained the ability to jump from human to human. Scientists call this quick ability slippery, and slippery is in quotation marks. This coronavirus not being in any form of a human virus, whereas we would all have some natural or acquired immunity, it took off like a rocket. And this was because humans have no known immunity. Doctors have no known medicines for it. And it just so happens that this particular mutated animal virus changed itself in such a way that it causes great damage to the human lungs. That's why coronavirus is different from the seasonal flu or H1N1 or any other type of influenza. Thus, this is a very slippery uh, mutation. And it's a lung eater. And it's already mutated again so that we now have two strains to deal with, strain S and strain L which makes it twice as hard to develop a vaccine. We really have no tools in our shed with this. History has shown that fast and immediate closings of public places has helped in the past pandemics. And it goes on, he gives some history about other diseases in the past. And to conclude, let me end by saying, right now it's hitting older folks harder but this genome is so slippery if it mutates again, and he's hypothesizing that it will, that it could actually be a little bit more contagious than what it is. So uh, this immunologist advice from John Hopkins is just saying stay at home, you know, just to spread the word that this is very contagious. I did not know after reading this that this was a animal virus that mutated over into a human virus. So I went to John Hopkins University, <laughs> went to their website to uh, verify some of this, and I did find uh, some interesting information. So how did this new coronavirus spread to humans? And again, I will post this link. COVID-19 appeared in Wuhan, a city in China, in December 2019. Although health officials are still tracing the exact source of this new coronavirus, early hypothesis thought it may be linked to a seafood market in Wuhan, China. Some people who visited the market developed viral pneumonia caused by the new coronavirus. A study that came out January 25th of this year notes that the individual with the first reported case became ill on December 1st, 2019, and it had no link to the seafood market. Investigations are ongoing on how the virus originated and thus spread. So there is verification that it came from a seafood market. So here are some symptoms, cough, fever, and shortness of breath. If you have any kind of respiratory difficulty, such as coughing or shortness of breath, call your doctor or a healthcare provider and explain your symptoms over the phone before going to the doctor's office, urgent care facility, or emergency room. And the reason they want you to call in, because if you do happen to have it, they don't want you to quickly spread anything to uh, your doctor, your healthcare provider, or anyone else that's in the emergency room or the waiting room. You can actually talk over the phone, go over the symptoms that you're having, and then your healthcare provider or that doctor on the phone will give you uh, advice and advise you on what to do next. I am not a doctor. I am not a healthcare provider. All the information in this video is exactly that. It's information that I'm finding and I'm wanting to make it a little bit easier to understand for everyone. Uh, but I 
and I cannot diagnose anybody. I cannot say do this to prevent this. What I can do is share the information that I do find so that you guys are informed and you can make your own informed decisions. Uh, so here's a link. If you feel sick or you're concerned, uh, it shifts over to this other web page. Uh, if you have a cough, a fever, or difficulty breathing, and you're worried that you may have the COVID-19, here are some recommendations. There's a video here, which I won't play. Um, the link will be posted. Um, it's a good video and you can watch it on your own. But here's some of the text. Unless it is an emergency, um, do not go to work, school, or public places and avoid public transportation. If your symptoms are severe or you feel like you need medical care, call before you go to a doctor's office, urgent care center, or emergency room. I know when I went in uh, a week ago to have my own cancer checkup, which came out good, everything's great, uh, all my blood work came back awesome, but one of the questions they were asking me um, as I was checking in, if I traveled outside the US, if I had been in contact with anyone that had traveled outside the US, if I had known anyone that traveled outside the US, I mean, it was just 20 extra questions that they, that they asked me that um, they didn't normally ask me. And I thought that was very interesting. I'm glad they did. Um, of course, I answered no to everything because you know I'm here just I, I go to work and I go home. But um, it was nice to see that they were you know being that diligent with everyone. And the the waiting room was very interesting. Normally we have chairs that are together and tables that are together, and it was like you'd have two or three chairs and then like a huge space and then two or three more chairs and another huge space. Hand sanitizer was everywhere, so it was it was interesting to see because you know we're dealing with cancer patients. When I go into Chapel Hill for my checkup, I go to the bone marrow transplant clinic, and everyone in there is a cancer patient, or they are about to have a bone marrow transplant, or they've already had their bone marrow transplant, and they're there for their checkup. So we have to be careful because our immune system is already compromised. And I have my mask, band-aids. I keep, I keep this with me all the time. And then here's my bag of, you know, medicines that I take. And I have more medicines that I take throughout the day. Uh, but all of that is to keep my leukemia at bay and to keep me healthy. So the coronavirus, uh, for anyone that has any kind of a immune system issue, such as a cancer patient, uh, needs to be very diligent. Now I did ask my doctor what I could do different. Uh, and he said, do everything that you normally do to prevent the flu. Well, I have my gloves and the gloves that I use are full fingered gloves, meaning they cover the fingertips. And they actually have this little um, pad on the end so I can still use my iPhone and my computer and the iPad uh, without having to take my gloves off. And that's a, that's a nice barrier to have. Um, so I would suggest anyone, if you have to go to the supermarket or you, know, you, you have to go to work, make sure you have a, a pair of gloves with you so that you do have some sort of a barrier uh, to opening a door, a door handle. I mean, anything that people commonly touch um, it's, it's nice to have. Having said that, I want to get into a little bit of um, some online training that I'm doing. I started this uh, for cancer patients. And so if you have the ability to download the apps like Skype or Zoom, go ahead and do that. Um, and I can do a live one-on-one -on -one, uh, personal training with you right from your home. You don't have to go anywhere. Uh, you don't need any specialized equipment. If you do have equipment available at your house, and some of my clients do, just let me know ahead of time what equipment you have available 
and I can program and design for you a workout, you know, in like a live session, and we can use your equipment. I also have a lot of body weight training exercises. There is a new platform that I discovered, which um, I will probably be unveiling soon. Um, where I can invite you and we can just set up times and we can start doing online personal training. This is for my clients and the cancer patients that may not be able to get to Woodalls. If you can come to Woodalls, awesome. I do early morning training sessions and Woodalls will be open just as long as we can. And we're not staying open in defiance of anyone. The reason that we are staying open, and you know our numbers are very small here, uh, we specialize in personal training. That's how Woodall started, as a personal training private studio, specializing in one-on-one -on -one training. I led a boot camp yesterday, and the boot camp was outside. We definitely practiced all of the uh, social distancing techniques, and I had one of the clients, a male client, he approached me at the end and actually wanted to thank me and Barbie and the staff for having Woodalls remain open during this time. I was pleasantly surprised to hear that. And I asked this individual, I go, why are you thanking me? This is nice, but why are you thanking me? And he said, because it gives my family a chance to get out of the house and to come to a place where this has um, this has become our family, our community, and our feel-good place. I loved hearing that because when I originally created the private studio, I wanted to develop a community that all the clients could enjoy and we could support each other. And during this time with the coronavirus, I've really seen uh, a lot of clients step up with each other on that. I've actually had a few clients um, reach out to me on Facebook and through text messaging because they know I have a weakened immune system and I deal with uh, not being able to get out too much. You know, they asked if they could go grocery shopping for me or if I needed anything to be picked up. And I thought that was just amazing. And that just really touched my heart. So I know if they're reaching out to me, they're reaching out to other clients as well. But to have that client say yesterday that it was nice that we were that we were still open. So back in the day, in the 90s, I was uh, one of two trainers at the time that traveled to people's homes because I knew people liked to train at their home. They didn't necessarily like to go to the gym. So in Las Vegas, I created a business where I would travel to you. It was an awesome business. And I will be posting a picture of articles with that as well. But the point I'm making is that my entire personal training career, I have been thinking outside the box. I love having Woodalls. I love having this facility and being able to train everybody and to communicate with everybody. With the coronavirus, like I said, it's time to be proactive and not reactive. Take an inventory of your health. If you're coughing, if you're sneezing, don't come in. If it's just allergies, contact me and we can do a Skype session or a Zoom session uh, and do a live personal training. The number one that I've seen across all of the news sources is that you need to maintain your immune system and maintain your health. You can do this by still maintaining your nutrition. I know when people tend to shelter in place, they tend to eat comfort food, high fat food, high butter food, high sugar food. You know, once in a while, I mean, it's not gonna kill you, but you need to maintain your healthy lifestyle. You need to maintain your schedule. I am now teaching online for my high school students at the Christian school that I teach at. We are meeting on the exact same day and time that we would normally have class. That gives a sense of normalcy to your everyday life. You need to do that with your personal training and your fitness. If you're used to personal training at 9.30 in the morning with me, all right, well, let's schedule a session. Let's maintain that. You don't have to miss your workout. 
or your stress release. By maintaining a healthy lifestyle, you will automatically strengthen your immune system. I am not saying you'll be immune to everything. You have viruses and bacteria constantly attacking you on your clothes, at work, school, everywhere. But as I read on the text and as I read online here, our body can develop a natural immunity to those. The coronavirus is not a natural human to human virus. This came from animals and it mutated over um, and it's very contagious and, and it's attacking the lungs. But you can be proactive in your health by taking your supplements. Um, and I've sent several emails and text messages on the supplements that I recommend that can help you maintain your health. Eating your fruits and vegetables, getting enough sleep. If you're working from home because you're not able to go to work, maintain your work schedule. But since you are working from home, you do have the unique ability to exercise from home and to take breaks. I have lots of exercises and we can be in touch with that. So that being said, not wanting to scare anyone, <laughs> wanting this to be very positive for you and all the trainers here at Woodalls, we love you guys, we love our clients, we are here for you. We still are your source for nutrition advice, supplement advice, exercise advice, and this will pass. Don't give in to fear. Pray or meditate, reach out to me. If you need a positive voice, um, I definitely can be your positive voice and uh, let's work out together, okay? We will get through this and we're gonna come out on the other side stronger than ever. I have no doubt about that, all right? Until next time, have a good day, guys.